It has been said that the beauty of Japanese Urushi lacquerware has attracted many people in Europe ever since the age of exploration. The origin of Urushi lacquerware traces all the way back to the Jomon period. An ancient sword made from stone with red lacquer decoration from the Jomon remains has been excavated in Iwate Prefecture, known as Japan's largest lacquer production area. This indicates how Urushi lacquerware were used in daily life back then. The culture of Urushi lacquer utilization has been passed down through generations by changing its form to adjust to different lifestyles and tastes. Urushi ware has been protected and developed as regional and precious culture by locals. Now let's take a look at the details of Urushi lacquer production in its culture. Iwate Prefecture is located in the northern area of the Tohoku region and is known as the largest lacquer production land, providing about 70% gross lacquer in Japan. Iwate Prefecture has cultivated Urushi lacquer through the land's rich nature, climate, and unique heritage. Let's see the production area of Urushi lacquer. Ninohe City is in the northern part of Iwate also known as the land of Joboji lacquer production and Joboji coating techniques. The Kosatsu Tendaiji temple is famous for the root of Joboji coating. Monks at this temple invented Joboji lacquerware for daily use. Some paintings and masks created with lacquer are housed here at the Tendaiji temple. If you would like to learn more about the Joboji coating, Teki Seisha is the place to visit. You can purchase the lacquerware or participate in their painting workshop. You will reach Hachimantai City within a 30 minute drive from Joboji, a city known as the land of the Urushi lacquerware. The skills of lacquer coating are called Apinuri, which originated in the age of the shogunate. Here at a training facility called Api Urushi Studio, which supports young craftsmen who strive to improve their skills of making the beautiful lacquerware. What makes these factors possible is the rich nature of their land. The symbolic figure of Iwate, Mount Iwate, lays in the center of the beautiful Hachimantai and very famous all-season resort Api Plateau, as well as the land's incredibly rich natural hot springs. There is another region of Urushi ware production in the southern part of Iwate called Hidehira Koting. This Urushi ware with luxurious golden lacquer, foil, and drawings are known as the creation of Hidehira Fujiwara, the third principle of the leader Oshu Fujiwara. Tourists around the globe visit Hiraizumi and Ichinoseki City to see the world heritage remains that pro the prosperity of the leader Fujiwara. So far, we have introduced Iwate as the root of Japanese lacquer. Now, let the journey begin to the world of Urushi. Craftsmen gather sap from trees, drop by drop, all by hand. Let's look at the special tools for this procedure. These are the main tools for urushi gathering. From the right, takapo, kama, urushi kanna, hera, eguri, and gonguri. Takapo is a container to keep the collected tree sap. Kama is a tool to peel the tree bark to smoothen the surface of the tree. Urushi kana is used to give a cut called hen to a tree. Hera is a spatula to scrape off the sap. Eguri takes the very last drop of sap called urame at the end of each season. Finally, gonguri is used to pour urushi lacquer from takapo to a barrel. Let's take a tour of lacquer gathering with craftsman Miss Yamazaki. The first process is called kamazuri. She peels tree bark to flatten the surface. The next process is to take an urushi kana to give a cut called hen 
to a tree. Then, very carefully, scraping off the tree sap by Hera and pour it into Takapo. Ms. Yamazaki repeats these procedures with 50 different trees a day. Once the tree is cut, she must wait three days to rest the tree. She cuts and gathers sap from 200 trees in one season alone. A skilled craftsman is able to finish these tasks with 100 trees daily and 400 trees every season. If the cut is not deep enough, the sap will not be produced. When a cut is too deep, the tree will die. Sap gathering is like collecting drops of life from trees. Precise decision is needed to see the difference of each tree to continue this process. The harmony of skilled craftsmen and nature is raising future craftsmen and supporting the high quality of Urushi ware as well as the culture and tradition. Now, Let's look at how wooden bases are made. The creation of wooden bases starts with drying out a log to stabilize the flexibility. Kana and small swords and wood lathes are used to form the shape based on the painter's designs. ぬりしとのなんかこの見合わせなきゃならないから、し、こう注文を受け取って全然人が使えばみんなそれは血を使って、まあこっちからもアドバイスもするんですけど、そうそうその被害図番大事にしてますね。やっぱりぬりしとが
After the coating is done, we move on to polishing, which smooths the surface and raises the adhesion and durability. During the appy coating process, these steps are patiently repeated five times. At last, the final coating. This must be done in a special room to avoid dust and dirt, to remove brush marks and create a luster. The products are dried in a spinning machine called Urushiburo. That sets perfect shine and strength to the Urushi wear. That is how each Urushi was born by many craftsmen and their hearts. Urushi is not only used to make dishware, but also used as paint and glue to protect Japanese tradition. This is a scene of repair works at the Tsurugaoka Hachimangu Shrine in Kamakura City, Kanagawa Prefecture. The superior characteristics of Urushi, such as antiseptic and waterproof properties, have been utilized for fixing Buddhist statues, drawings, and religious buildings since ancient times. The power to protect Japanese culture. Whether it's used as glue, beautiful paint, or reinforcing materials for higher durability. The power of Urushi Laka protects historical properties and ensures that treasures are passed on to many generations to come. Chips and cracks on Urushi wear can be repaired for long-lasting use. They teach us how important it is to cherish and value all things around us. The only craft that used to be called Japan by other countries was the glamorous Japanese Urushi lacquerware. It traveled overseas in the 15th century and captured people's hearts all over the world. Iwate is the land of people whose appreciation for Urushi created dishware for daily life that has been nurturing their culture from olden days. The only place that keeps on giving life to Urushi production in Japan and keeps the lighting fire of Urushi. The land gives life to everything and raises them with subtle affection. From daily dishware to luxurious crafts, every piece is born and nurtured in the hands of Iwate. Iwate is the sanctuary of Urushi. It's the forest of creation. <laughs>